there's only one candidate who can make this a winning issue, and that's Rick Santorum. I'm not going to worry too much about what Rick is saying these days. When uh, you fall further and further behind, uh, you get a little more animated. The worst person to make that case is Mitt Romney. We're here today, and he's not. Quit distorting our words. If I see it, it's bull****. Come on, man. What are you doing? Forum urged Republicans there not to vote for Mitt Romney. Pick any other Republican in the country. He is the worst Republican in the country. Not the campaign. This is Rick Santorum. I think everybody knows nobody puts words into my mouth. If you want a conservative as the nominee of this party, you must vote for Mitt Romney. You must vote for Mitt Romney. Asked, will I preserve and protect a woman's right to choose? I make an unequivocal answer. Yes. No, I'm saying I changed my mind, and you can look at my record as governor, and, uh, and you can see in my record as governor that I have consistently been pro-life. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I have since the time that my mom took that position when she ran in 1970 as a U.S. Senate candidate. I will be a pro-life president. So when I ran for office, I was effectively pro-choice. I didn't call myself pro-choice, but I said I... Just like I've been a pro-life governor. You're only allowed a certain number of flips before people begin to doubt your character. Uh, and I think Romney exhausted his quota sometime back. Do you think a mandate, mandating people to buy insurance, is the right tool? Uh, Brett, I don't know how many hundred times I've said this, too. This is an unusual interview. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. President, would you have signed the National Defense Act as written? Yes, I would have, and I do believe that it's appropriate. There's been another reported flip-flop by the GOP presidential frontrunner, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney did a quick flip-flop on his position on the contraceptive mandate. First, he said he didn't support a Senate Republican's effort that would allow employers to deny insurance coverage based on moral objects. About an hour later, he did another interview and backtracked, saying that he actually supports the proposal by Senator Blunt. I didn't understand his question. Of course I support the Blunt Amendment. Well, Is he or isn't he right. for it or against These days, Romney calls himself an outsider. I'm the only guy that hasn't spent time in Washington. Listen to him in 2002. I've, I've learned from my Olympic experience that if you have people that really understand how Washington works and have personal associations there, you can get money to help build economic development opportunities. I think people recognize that I'm not a partisan Republican, that I'm someone who is moderate and that my, my views are progressive. Conservatives have hammered Mitt Romney for inconsistencies on abortion, gay marriage, and health care. But he's not alone. Newt Gingrich's been on both sides of a long list of issues, sometimes in the same week. As far back as 1993, the former speaker supported health care mandates. I, I am for people, individuals, exactly like automobile insurance, individuals. I don't think right-wing social engineering is any more desirable than left-wing social engineering. Freddie Mac paid Gingrich at least $1.6 million as a consultant. No, I You're said, an embarrassment to well, our party. I'm sorry you feel that way. Why don't you get out before sorry, you make a bigger you fool of yourself? Sorry. Ed, this is the guy that tried to get his marriage annulled, I think his second marriage, tried to get the illegal GOPAC contributions ignored. He was an embarrassment then, he's an embarrassment now. Every four years, candidates from both parties make similar promises, but too many times, after the election is over and the confetti is swept away, all those promises fade from memory, and the lobbyists and special interests move in, and people turn away, disappointed as before, left to struggle on their own. We know what's filled the void, the cynics, the lobbyists, the special interests, who've turned our government into a game only they can afford to play. They think they own this government, but we're here today to take it back. The time for that kind of politics is over. It is through. It's time to turn the page right here and right now. I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. I will close Guantanamo. I will restore habeas corpus. from now, you'll be able to look back with pride and say that this was the moment 
when it all began. An atrocious political environment, a very weak economy, a high unemployment rate. Working folks who are struggling to remain in their homes. Relatively low approval numbers. Struggling to be able to get back to work. Things are not going in the right direction, they're going in the wrong direction. That's why I'm in this race, to offer change that we can believe in. Jobs that pay, health care that's affordable, pensions you can count on. Millions of people living in conditions where they go hungry every single day. 49 million Americans living below the poverty line. Why do you think you deserve to be reelected? They're not happy to, with the way you're doing your job. Our people are hurt. We don't know what the strategy is. What's he going to do in the second term? More of this? Is this as good as it gets? The unemployment's 846. You've still got soft consumer demand. You've got no business investment. People are shaking their heads and saying, I don't know if I can vote for them again. I don't think they're better off than they were four years ago. If I don't have this done in three years, then there's going to be a one-term proposition.